Hello everyone, Bob Scott here. Thanks for joining me. I've got my business partner Jimmy Vreeland here with me and in this quick video we want to introduce you to Joint Ops Properties and tell you what we're all about. We'll give you a bit about both of our backgrounds and tell you why we're qualified to talk about the world of real estate investing. So Jimmy, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Hi everybody, Jimmy Vreeland here. Uh, the quick bullet points is I'm a graduate of the United States Military Academy at West Point. Uh, Playing college football, we're selling to you right there. Yeah, I guess you could say what I did was playing. Um, I did I did get a letter, and I was a great scout team player. So I rode the bench, but we'll call it playing, sure. Did you get any actual catches in any games? No. No, Jimmy was wide receiver, for those who are wondering. I have a, a good buddy who was a lineman who caught a ball after it bounced off the face of a defensive lineman, and he caught the ball. So technically... There was a lineman on the roster who had more catches than me. What was his yards after catch? He actually, yeah, he has more yards too. So he got two yards after that. He really, he really rumbled. So, but yeah, we'll call it playing college football. Um, then I spent five years as an Army Ranger. I went to uh, Iraq twice, Afghanistan once. And we, we do call this company Joint Ops Properties because our military experience did affect on how we run this company and it does generate a lot of ideas for for us. After I got out of the Army, I moved back home to St. Louis and I spent seven years in orthopedic sales, selling knee and hip replacements. And in that time, I became a very avid wakeboarder. And also in that time, uh, I had four kids in five years, five and a half years, uh, me and my Lo lovely wife Susie. We have four kids ages five, four, two, and one. And we put that bullet point in there because I saw real estate as the only avenue where I was going to be able to support a big family and pay for, co for Catholic tuition. Yeah, if you can't tell, Jimmy's got four kids, uh, you know, traditional Ir uh, Irish Catholic family just pumping them out. Yeah. And every time I got a commission check, and I was a commission-only salesperson, I was like, there's no way this is going to support this family, so i got to find more income somehow. All right. So a little bit about myself. Uh, I went to the United States Air Force Academy, Colorado Springs. Also played football there. Like Jimmy, was, uh, was not a starter. Um, but uh, I played an offensive tackle, was a lineman there. And you guys did beat West Point. All four years, right? Not all four years, actually. It was it was a little bit of a, uh, a rough patch in the uh, Commander in Chief's. Um, How many uh, times did you guys beat Navy? Uh, you know, I want to say it was two times. Yeah, but my we had a we had a rough uh, junior and senior year, actually. I'm pretty embarrassed by the fact that I was on the last team. I rode the bench on the last team to beat Navy. So that's that's not really about real estate. So sorry. No worries. Anyways, um, yeah, so uh, I, uh, my degree in, at the academy was in civil engineering, and I spent five years in the active duty Air Force afterwards, mainly managing construction projects. My first, um, first base was Eglin Air Force Base, Florida. And, um, and what did you do in Iraq? While I was in Iraq, I, uh, yeah, I spent one tour in Iraq in 2009, and I was actually assigned to the Army. Uh, I was working for the... Uh, um, J7 division managing construction projects. So I had about 25 police station projects in the greater Baghdad area. Um, and I would go out and meet local contractors and, and try to do some reconstruction out there. Although it was, it was kind of hard. So I mean, we don't take it property in any condition, but we do feel certain confidence taking on different projects because Bob did fix properties in war tour in Iraq. Yeah, I've I've managed um, any any everything from a security bollard installation, a five thousand dollar project, to multi million dollar forensic facilities in in Baghdad. So I've seen it all when it comes to construction. I've done secured skiffs. Um, so everything that we're doing here in St. Louis when it comes to to construction is all very simple, very easy. And nothing excites Bob more than single family houses in St. Louis, Missouri. Exactly, exactly. So as you can tell, uh, Jimmy and I had a lot in, in common playing uh, football and going to service academies, both of our military backgrounds. We're both from St. Louis originally, and we were both actually doing real estate before we met each other about two and a half years ago. Um, but uh, as I, 
Jimmy was a private lender to me on a deal and I later wholesaled him another house and, and we soon realized that we had some synergies working together so we decided to join forces. And uh, as Jimmy mentioned, our, our company, Join Outs Properties, references our military background and our, our combined services working together. And I got really annoyed at Bob's poker face when he was wholesaling me properties. So that's <laughs> another reason we started working together. So, Jimmy, uh, tell us a little bit about how you got started into real estate. What was it that, uh, that made you get excited about this asset class? I mean, I remember distinctly reading Rich Dad, Poor Dad in Afghanistan. And I think part of being in the military is you're very self-motivated, self-directed, and you can move autonomously, and you don't really need a boss, and you don't really need a, a super, super amount of direction, especially in the Rangers. You know, you were expected to put on your big boy pants and, and move out and do things. So I, you know, I knew getting out of the military, I was not going to really desire a large organization or a large or a big boss or a big corporate structure. So I was always looking for something entrepreneurial and my whole family's in sales. So I was knew I was going to do something in sales, but then I read Rich Dad Poor Dad and I was like this is the fastest most reliable way to be autonomous and to have passive income and generally create wealth. So saying all that, I went and got a job for a for a big corporation. But I, you know, I was a commission only salesperson, so I did kind of work autonomously. And you had some mouths to feed, so so you had to transition into that, that part where you can get full passive income and, and cover all your expenses. Yeah, right? you know, I was I was doing very well in the sales position, and but I only got to keep two thirds of what I was making. So the more often my wife got pregnant, the more nervous I was getting about those those commission checks. So I needed to find some place where I had some tax advantage. Because as a as a W two commission only salesperson, I had a big tax target on my back. So real estate was a great way to mitigate taxes and was a great way to bring in passive income to ensure that as my wife kept getting pregnant, that we could continue to feed these children. And then, like I said, I read Rich Dad probably in two thousand six, and my brother was in med school in St. Louis, and my parents were interested in investing, so. I would send all my overseas pay back to them, and we bought our first property in 2006 in St. Louis. Very cool. Well, a lot of similarities between your story and mine is how I got into into real estate. I read uh, Rich Dad Poor Dad actually in 2006 as well. Now that I now that I yeah. think about it, now you mention it, um, I just gotten out of the academy, graduated that year, and um, I got to my first assignment and. Um, you know, I, I was sitting in a cubicle with a bunch of other engineers, and I all of a sudden I like I had this like I don't know epiphany where I looked around. And I was like, "Do I really want to be doing this for the next 30, 40 years?" And the answer for me was a no. And so I I started searching around for for something else because after coming out of the academy where you basically don't have much of a life um, between football and, uh, and and schoolwork and all the other stuff they throw at you. Um, I had all this free time on my hands, and so I needed a creative outlet for that. And, and for me, that was reading investment books. Um, I bought my first property in 2006 in Florida. It was a townhouse uh, on the beach. A lot of you uh, can probably imagine how that deal went, um, buying at the peak of the <laughs> peak of the market in Florida in 2006. Um, that first property I lost $20,000 on, um, but it was actually a little bit of a blessing in disguise because it forced me to really evaluate um, what was going on in the market and what caused this, you know. I mean, I think the other thing that's interesting about us is we both kind of got into the private economy during the biggest real estate crash in history. So just like you losing 20 grand, it kind of made you think like, why did this happen? I know getting out of the military in 2008, I was like, why is there an economic downturn? And I had like 90 days off so I actually did some reading and stumbled upon Austrian economics, real estate, hard money, all this. By hard money, we mean gold and silver. So it's, we kind of came of age at the same time. Yeah, yeah, and, and kind of got to the same uh, epiphanies through, through different, different avenues. So, um, yeah, exactly. It, it forced me to, to, to evaluate what was going on and, and really buckle down and say, okay, I'm going to figure this stuff out. And, and obviously passive income – 
Um, same thing, but was a huge uh, attraction to me to real estate and, and being able to work for myself and kind of set the own terms to my and life. And rich dad, poor dad, the huge epiphany is rich people, wealthy people. I really hate the word rich. Wealthy people don't work for money. You only have 24 hours in a day. You have 10 fingers and toes. There's no way that one human effort can create wealth. It's created by systems and leverage yeah. and building a team and thinking and creating value and creating a product. Yes, Buy, buying assets instead of liabilities. Buy something that's going to put money into your pocket over and over again. But about our real estate experience to date, um, you know, we're specializing in single family residences in St. Louis, Missouri. We'll break down why we think that is one of the best asset classes out there. And uh, primarily, we use a lease with the option to buy exit strategy. This is also termed rent to own. Again, there's a ton of advantages of using the rent to own strategy for your real estate business, and we'll break that down further in another video. Combined between Jimmy and myself, we have 125 properties here in St. Louis, and, and we're adding probably six to seven each and every month. Um, we've got some good systems in place and a good team behind us that are that help us growing our portfolio each and every month. And then another thing that in a term that annoys me is I invest in real estate. Real estate's such a poor term. There's so many different ways to make money when you buy property. But we have friends who only invest in commercial. We have friends who only flip. There's just so many different ways to profit from these sorts of systems. This is what we have found that works best with us, works best with our personality and temperament. And, but there's plenty of other people that have different strategies, different solutions. But of course, we think ours is the best. So if you want to find out more about us, you can go to jointopsproperties.com or email us at jointopsproperties at gmail.com. Jimmy's phone, that, phone number is right there. Uh, please give him a call at 2 o'clock in the morning. Uh, I'd appreciate that. And uh, our next video is going to be all about different asset classes. We're going to go through uh, whether you should purchase raw land, commercial, multifamily, office, maybe REITs, or uh, our favorite uh, single family homes. And we'll show you why single families are our favorite. Jimmy, any last words? We're going to be doing a series of these videos and maybe video journals. And basically, we're just trying to put out what we know and what can help other people find passive income or get started in real estate. Great. Thanks so much for joining us here today.